Uh, it's something that's definitely needed. And a lot of times, you know, people from our area, they don't get a chance to go and travel to Chicago, from Midwest, they don't get a chance to even travel uh, regional for, for their regional conferences. So this is why I want to uh, thank Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul has been thanking all of us. Let's give Mr. Paul a So uh, anyway, I, I'm charged to come and, and, uh, and be in your presence. I'm blessed to be in your presence. It's an honor to be with you and to share with you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what it takes to cultivate a successful band program and also make sure you keep it going. Now, it's going to be in three ways. It's going to be in three parts. The first part is that I'm going to get you involved. We're going to have a discussion of some things that you think. Ask you a question. And the second thing is, is that I'm going to give the, political correct, uh, the politically correct answer. And after that, we're going to talk in the trenches. Okay, it's called <laughs> trench talk. All right? So my thing is, I want to, I want to make sure that we, we talk real and have an honest conversation because you guys, the situations are different. As Mr. Paula just mentioned, when you go to Midwest, they're talking about uh, a, a, an environment that's already established in a way. You are now establishing your program right now. So we have to make sure that we break that down to the least uh, 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 common denominator on how you want to be in your program, all right? So, discussion. What is a successful music program? I'm asking you by a show of hands. I want to make sure that I hear from the undergraduate students as well, okay? If you have not acquired your own band program this year, raise your hand, if you're undergrad, all right? I want you to ask in particular, okay? Panelists, of course, you can chip in too. What is a successful music program by a show of hands? Let's go. What is a successful music program, in your opinion? What is it? You know you got to make sure you let all of us know. Let's share this information. Yes, sir. A uh, program that's at least average in every category. At least average in every category. What are the categories? Like concert bands, <coughs> concert bands jazz bands. Yeah, every type of ensemble, and you give your students everything they need. Every all right, good deal. So remember what he said. What school you go to? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> give me somebody else. Give me somebody else. Come on, guys, let's get involved in this dialogue. You know what a good music band program is. Let's talk to each other. Yes, sir. Um, make sure the kids are actually in the program um, with the opportunities that they deserve to move on to the next level. Right, to move on to the next level. You are pouring everything into your students, and when they go to college, they're ready. Okay, not just ready musically, but they're ready what? Socially. Yes, sir. Uh, feeding the students uh, musically, uh, creating opportunities for them, and also uh, cultivating with them uh, from a holistic standpoint, making them a better person as well too, while adding the musical experience of concert band, marching band, uh, symphonic band, small ensemble. All right, so focusing on the person, making sure they're a good person. Let me get one more person. Okay, what makes a good band program? The band program should reflect the objectives of the community and the school for uh, educating students musically, academically, and socially. socially. Right, okay, so a whole list of pros. So let, let, let's look at all the textbook answers you've been seeing at all these clinics, all these conferences. Okay, let's take a look at it. The text means student oriented. It's all about the students, right? Why do you teach? Is it because of the students or is it because of you? Why do you teach? It's because of the students, right? So student oriented. Administrative, community, parental support, high student retention, successful high graduation rates. Again, this is stuff that you guys already said. You know this stuff. Next thing, organized. Are you organized administratively? Next thing, family oriented. Is your band a family? Don't you know that when a kid comes to your band home, you don't have a family that they have, most of y'all? That's important, family oriented. And, then, and again, the check mark means that you have all this stuff. Okay, you're good with all this stuff. The next thing is you're not afraid to grow or to do different things or to take risks. Okay, in our professions, you can't be afraid to take risks. All right, now let's take a look at the question marks. Now all these things, let's just say hypothetically, you have together. The next thing is, is have a sustained positive culture and environment of teaching and learning. What does that mean? Is your environment positive? All right, let's talk about, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going premature to the trenches, but let's go there really quick. I taught in a situation just like you guys. I know you guys see these college directors all over you. That means nothing. All that stuff means nothing when you see us uh, on the videos and all that stuff. That's a hill of age. The real work is what you guys do. My hat goes off to you. So I was once there. I taught in the inner city schools called Near High School. The 
Again, just like you guys' situation, had no instruments, had no administrative support, the whole gang, okay? Now, my particular environment was not, I would say at this particular point by learning over the years, it, it wasn't a positive environment. Why wasn't it a positive environment? My students were afraid of me. They were afraid of me. And we're going to get to why they were afraid of me, okay? We're going to go to the trenches soon. Having more than one ensemble outside of marching band that perform with quality, okay? Concert band, jazz band, etc. Proficient musicians and players, teacher and students work together, not against each other towards a common goal, okay? Have to make sure they work together. Proper time management and clear objectives. Here we go. Trench talk. Let's have a real conversation. How many of y'all have been to church before? A lot of people in here. And you are sitting in the congregation and the preacher is talking to you, and, you, and he's talking to the whole uh, congregation. But you swear it seems like he's talking to you. I'm not here to step on anybody's toes, and I want to make sure I make that disclaimer as well, okay? Because a lot of these mistakes that I see on this board and around this board, I've made the same mistakes. College band originals are not perfect. We're far from it. We still have a lot to learn. Still have a lot to learn, okay? So these things that I've learned over my career, we have to curse our kids out. We gotta do it. I know. I know. I'm standing on a lot of toes right now. I'm doing it. You know what? I was the same way. I was the same way. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta curse our little black people. You gotta do it. But you don't. Let me tell you how I know that. You have to be in a different set of situations. You have to have somebody who's gonna teach you how not to do that. I have had the, the, the honor and privilege to study under Mr. Dow Taylor. And Mr. Dow Taylor, he's a director of bands. Our, our structure is quite different. <coughs> we have director of bands. He has all the administrative stuff. He doesn't really work with the ensembles. I have a marching band. I have a concert band. We have Lowell Holmes, and he's a symphonic band director. And we have Mr. Kevin Johnson. He's newly added to our staff. He's our, uh, he's our uh, chief arranger. He's also a phenomenal educator. So we do all that stuff together. But anyway, long story short, Dow Taylor can, he, he taught me how to talk to people and get in their minds what I have to custom at. When I say people, I'm talking about all kids. I'm talking about all kids. That's wrong. Set strict, consequ uh, strict consequences and then back them up. You have your rules. You have your rules. Guess what? We don't cuss in our band hall at all. But guess what? They get out of line, where are they going to be? Waving that pom pom, buying that ticket. Those kids don't have to be in your program. But Mr. Little, I only got 30 kids. You have to, you have to pick and choose your battles. Do you want your culture to be positive? Or you want to make sure you, or you want to look up at that kid every day that gets on your nerves. And he's sitting in your class. You really don't like him. And you got to look at him every single day and he's messing up your program. You have to choose. 30 or 29. You have to choose. I'm not saying I'll be firm. I'm just saying be sensible. I was just lucky enough, I was, I was 23, years old, 23 years of age when I got my first job. And one day my band did something, I was just going off them. I was cussing, I was saying every single word you could think of. And it just so happened, I was blessed in a situation where assistant principal came to me and said, look man, you can't talk to these kids like that. He pulled me aside and that saved me. And so when I got to Jackson State and I, 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 I began to do that different approach, it helped me, okay? Your band becomes who you are. The environment you set, be mindful of the language that you use. Your band becomes you. If you're around that country, <coughs> random raving, guess what your band is going to do? When you're not looking, guess what they're doing when you're not looking? They cuss, they rant, they rave. Why are you looking at them like this? <laughs> when you leave them, what are they doing? Because that's the culture that they, that they exist in. If you want them to escape the hood, show them something different. A lot of you guys want your students to escape from the hood. You have to show them something different. The next thing, all my kids want to do is crank up. <laughs> That's all they want to do. Maybe true, but is that all you're teaching them? Is that all you're displaying? Uh-oh, trench talk. <laughs> is that all you're teaching them? And we have to be real careful with that. They are what you preach and teach. Don't expect for them to do something different from what you have not discussed with them. I know marching band is fun. I know. But the thing behind it is, as the parent in your band hall, you have to make sure you feed, feed the kids the vegetables. Okay? So for instance, if we, if we were playing a song 
And all bad law, and it doesn't sound good, I don't care if it's a current session or not. Let's loop it a hundred times. But if it doesn't sound good, I'm going to shut it down and say, hey, we're doing too much. And it ruins the kids' morale. <laughs> it ruins their morale. But you as the parent and the adult, you have to make sure that you step in there. You have to make sure you make those determinations. My kids won't be interested in those ensembles type of music. Wrong. You have a special rapport with your students. Don't you know if you tell your students to go walk on water, they're going to say, which lake? Don't you know <coughs> you have a special rapport with those students. They will, they, they will move the earth for you. So don't sit on them short and say that they're not going to be interested in those ensembles because if you tell them, they're going to follow. Okay? More than like. You make them do everything else that you want them to do. Make sure they do those concerts on time. My students are so bored of that stuff, they won't join. Maybe. But success in doing the right thing sometimes is boring. How many of you guys would say that you were flowing musicians on your instrument? A lot of people. Was it fun? <laughs> Was it fun getting there? I'm talking about the nuts and bolts of it. With you sitting down with your metronome, with those rhythms and exercises, the arm the book, developing yourself as a musician is not fun. You have to make sure that you go through the board stuff. Make musicianship just as competitive, and we already said that it's cranky, playing loud. Students will react. Excellent breeds excellence. Let me tell you how you do that. Name some of the terminology that, that your kids use in your band hall when a student can't play. Trash. If they're not loud. What they say? Let us know. Let's talk.
constant ensemble as well, too. Uh, right. Competitiveness. I mean, one thing that I've used this year being a white for the first year, and I'm not going to concert festival in 10 years. We did a showdown where we put the concert band on one side and the symphonic band. And we went live and made them play back and forth against each other, which actually made them start getting more competitive. Like the concert better, the concert the symphonic band, y'all trash. You know, and so basically trying to make that standard the same on both sides of the spectrum. That's, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Set standards and expectations for your students. Set standards and expectations for your students. Okay. So all these things are what band directors are supposed to do. Okay. So let's look at all of the you know correct stuff that you've been hearing in all these claims. You have to love the students. You have to genuinely love the students. You have to love teaching. You have to love music. You have to love band, and you have to communicate with parents and people. <coughs> okay. All this stuff you already know. You've been seeing that forever. Here are the question marks. Broaden your musical listening. Study and learn pedagogy. Just say it. Don't be afraid of failure or walking through the fire. It's tough changing the culture of a program, especially when it's been established. Especially when it's been established. You're going to have people that's going to just, just work against you just because you're you. You have to be able to walk through that fire if you have a vision for your program. The next thing is, is uh, expose students to quality. Learn as much as possible and share ideas. Ask for help for those you trust and respect. Know that you don't know it all. Amen. Know that you don't know it all. And that's very hard for young men already. You have to be very mature to really commit to, or really admit rather, that you just don't know it all. Again, I say to you, don't look at college band orators as, as if we on the pedestal. We just like you. Please make sure you remember that. A lot of you guys want to go to the collegiate level. Some of y'all are fine where you are. In some cases, you're in a better situation. Trying mm -hmm. to get to the trench talk and get to that a little bit later. <laughs> in some cases, I know it's all you can count about. Pick a literature that'll fit your students' ensemble. Teach. Teach. Provide performance opportunities that display the concert band. Trench talk. I listen to all types of genres of music. I'm a musician. How many of y'all travel here today? How many of y'all listen to the band that you travel? Never, Dr. Murray said never. When you listen to a band coming to this event, what genre did you listen to? Did you listen to a fifth chord? Did you listen to a zero? Did you listen to a field show? Chances are, I'm, I'm not going to have you to answer that question. But you ever heard the analogy, you are what you eat? You are what you listen to. You have to make sure that you're feeding your ear with quality. You have to listen to these concert ensembles. You have to listen to the University of North Texas. You have to listen to all these top tier programs. What does quality sound like? Okay. <coughs> I teach my kids how to play. All right. Dr. Murray walked into the room. He says, all right, I'm all corn. I'm getting ready to recruit for my band program. Sit down, little Johnny. Let's go. Do you have a prepared piece, Johnny? Yes, sir. What's your prepared piece? Neck. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us solo first, so we're coming straight in with it. Hey, man. That's a true story. Yeah, that's a true story. We see that. We see that. And so you have to question yourself as a director. So again, we, we have to start with us. So many times we blame other people for not being successful. It's their fault. They didn't give me this. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. You have to make sure you look at your, anything that happened with Jackson State University, Sunday Boom of the South, I blame myself first. Period. Every single thing that's not successful. And once I assess me, then I start looking outside for some other plans. Okay? If you have a 40 piece band and only four of them can play, reevaluate some things. <laughs> reevaluate some things. Okay. Let, let's go ahead and talk now. We're going to talk, let's go ahead and talk. This is for us, by us, right? I don't know where to take my students to see concert ensemble. You guys who are at Baton Rouge Southern University are doing an excellent job. Go and see that group play. If students in Jackson, Mississippi, go down the street and see Jackson State University. No excuse. Let me do you one better though. Wrong! If you know where to take them for a battle of the band, Every time I get on YouTube, I see a battle of the man every week. 
I'm not knocking it. I understand people need to make money. You're trying to get kids to your program. You're trying to cultivate an exciting atmosphere. But it needs to be that same attention into trying to figure out what it takes for concert festival. Again, Southern University, they host a concert uh, pre-festival. Take them there. If you're scared of listening to, to, to these big wigs in, in, the music, uh, in the music education field, take them somewhere else. Jackson State University holds one. We hold one. Take them somewhere. Okay? YouTube. Kids have YouTube. Pull up quality on YouTube. Here's one thing that I would suggest that you do. How many of you guys know some successful programs that get ones on stage every year? Okay? Now, here's where you would have to really swallow your pride. Take them to those schools. That changed my life forever. It's a school uh, in, in, in the Jackson area. It's called Regional High School. And it was a long time battle with that name of Jay McGough. He's teaching in Florida now. I took my band to Jay's school. And I, and, and I knew I had some issues, but I set my students down in that auditorium. They listened to, that, to those students play. And then that began to, to gear their mind in regards to what they should be and what they should look like. And then my students played for the Ridgeland students. You're talking about a, a, a program that gets a peer raise every single year. And that, that instantly changed the mindset of my students. How do your students know what a good marching band is? How do they know? How do they know? I'm asking a question. They watch them. They go to these games every single Saturday with their parents. So they're seeing it. So they need to make sure that they see what a quality concert band is, what a quality jazz band is. I promise you it'll change your, your perception of your students instantly. You won't have to do too much work. OK? I want to be the next great band director at the range. To crank on, insert college band on your person. <laughs> Can't wait to get my college band. I'm going to show Brian Sanders. I'm going to show him. I'm, I'm working right now on my craft. Don't be so eager to go to a collegiate band program. My hat goes off to you guys because you are teaching these students. Start off on a middle school level. Learn. Start off on a high school level. A lot of times you start off on a high school level and be on a middle school level because you start off what? Ninth graders. It's totally different when you can teach a student how to buzz rather than just say, okay, play that note. It's totally different when you can tell the player that I often free when you just say, play that in tune. It's totally different when you can fix an object and say, something wrong with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Learn that, and I will go to my great Sanders, Doc Liddell. He told me this. I was, I was a, a, a young, inspiring music educator. I said, Doc, I, I, I think I'm ready to go straight to the collegiate level. I think you ain't ready to go to no collegiate level. Take your butt. He ain't say butt. If you know Dr. Lewis was there, he definitely didn't say butt. He said, Take your butt to a little country school, a school that's not established, and teach. Learn how to teach. So don't be so quick to become the next great college band or to go somewhere and establish yourself first, build you a resume, and then you go and do that stuff, okay? By the time I left my program, we got superior rating, which was never heard of in the near high school. Uh, I had three of my students to make the top, uh, the top honor band or the top band, the Mississippi uh, Lions band in the state of Mississippi, the only black kids in that ensemble. By the time I left my program, I, I totally switched the culture. Okay? I'm doing the right things, but I'm not seeing success. Just stick to your guns. If you know you're in a situation, if you know you're doing the right thing, stick to your guns. I'm afraid I won't be liked. The students in the community won't like that mess. How many of y'all afraid you just won't be liked by your students? Y'all have parents? Y'all got parents? Mm -hmm. You remember some of those days you just didn't like your parents? <laughs> You know you love your mom. But if she told you, baby, yeah, you can go outside and hop on that trampoline and do a back and flip and bust your head wide open. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. If I told my son to do that over and over again. He wants to do that, but I know from my parental experience, if my son busts his head, that's trouble. It's up to you to say no. This is what we're going to do. You can't always buy it to your students. Yeah, they're going to smack their lips. They face is going to turn sour, but guess what? 
When you go through that fire, we're not talking about going through the fire. That's part of going through the fire because you want to be light. But once you go through that fire and establish your culture, it's going to be set forever. If you get a concert band, and this goes back to making sure that you uh, choose literature for your group, don't play sugar coat in the spring. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't take sugar coat. There are beautiful pieces that are composed, uh, wind band literature that are composed for groups that are making your group sound excellent. If, all, if the only thing that your students can do is play a whole note, make sure that they play that whole note as beautiful as, beautiful as they possibly can. Make sure that they emote to that whole note. If the only thing they can do is play quarter notes, make sure it's the best quarter notes that your students have ever placed on the canvas of music. That's your job, okay? This is the biggest thing. How many of y'all ever heard this before? My students don't listen, my parents are crazy, my principal is a jerk, I don't have work equipment, the counselors won't schedule my kids right, my students are in every afternoon activity that conflicts with band, they're pulling my students out of my class, we can't get better. What does that sound like to you? Yeah. Hey man, you in the trenches. In our culture, we're no, we're, we are, we are so familiar with grind until it's crazy. We know how to make some stuff work. It's in your DNA. So why not make band work? Maybe you are no stranger to the struggle. If you truly believe in yourself and your students, there's very few that you cannot accomplish. There are always more than one way to work around a tough situation. Okay, so the odds are against you. What are you going to do to fix it? Instead of complaining, it's easy. How many, how many, how many, how many of y'all ever had a <coughs> conversation with a bunch of band directors and you, you went for a positive conversation but it just, and then it just turned into a gripe session? <laughs> <laughs> like y'all going to a meeting, y'all going to have a business. Oh man, this is what we're going to get together. We're going to make this. We're gonna, we're gonna put everything together and we're gonna put everything on paper, and then y'all just start talking about what y'all, you know, the, the problems of the world and man. You didn't get anything accomplished. So stop blaming others and fix what you can't control. Fix what you can control. One of the students wrote, they need to be eager to learn, they want to be in band. Students respectful, listen to the director, buy into the vision. Students must be enrolled in band class, practice fundamental, evaluate, listen to themselves in band, how to see or they have to see the wins and the losses of other ensembles. They have to work hard and exceed. Let, let, let me go through something real quick about having to see the wins and the losses of ensembles, okay? When you take your groups to a battle of the bands, a lot of times we have a lot of media outlets to, to capture that. So they can see if they, if they sound good, they sound bad. You need to make sure that you create those same situations for concert ensembles as well, okay? Students need to make sure that they practice, okay? And you make sure they practice and have fundamentals. No, this man just didn't say practice. <laughs> <laughs> Students practicing today? He didn't just say that? Yes, I said it. If students love band, they do practice, but they practice on the wrong thing. They practice, but they practice on the wrong thing. They go out to your parking lot. I'm gonna go back to neck again. They go out <coughs> to your parking lot and they play neck as loud as they can. They practicing, but what are they practicing on? Getting what? Getting loud. And, I, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. We just gotta direct that focus. So again, everything that I'm saying is something that I've already done. <coughs> Okay, so don't take this as me, you know, uh, reprimanding you or, uh, or making this a bad thing. It's not that. It's just talking in the trenches. Okay? That's when you have to use the private lesson approach to mass teaching. How many of you have ever heard of a private lesson approach to mass teaching before? What does that entail?
section so we get this right. Okay, you did this section, I work on articulation. You know what I'm saying? Go piece by piece and add them all together. So that, that's how you teach one person. So you can do one person to do that for the whole class. And the last section? Do that, take the two to that, put it together. Now, you know, piece by piece. Right, exactly, exactly. So let me say this. What's the most important part of your playing day? What's the most important? When you get your kids in, they, they add the instruments out. What's the most important part of the day? Y'all warm up. Y'all warm up. Now, let me ask you this. Do you actually warm up? <laughs> or you got your arrival of school on Friday, like, Nick. Right, y'all warm up on y'all. Go ahead and play that B flat real quick. Pass neck out. I know this is something that I did. Let me make sure I get that clear. Warm up is the most important part of the day. Why? Because it's training the students, it's, it's, it's providing students the best tools that they need. It's training their armistice, it's training their ears, it's training their minds to get ready for the day. Now, should a warm up be my thing? Should it be the same thing every day? No, uh, you you may you may want to switch it up. Not every single day, but it, 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 because if you do if you do the same thing every single day, what happens to the students? They're 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 not learning anything. Their ears are not learning anything. Everything is blocked. Everything is monotone. Okay, give them what they need without them knowing. Let's say we're going to do this warm up today. They don't again. They, they're going to follow you. They don't know that you're feeding them their best. Just go through it with them. They don't know. And then by the time they leave you, they'll say, you know what? Mr. Parler had me learning. I can play scales. I can articulate. Those long tones that I did in a warm-up, that was to develop my armature and muscle memory and so many other things and to develop my tone, the way that I sound, the way in which I regulate my air. Mr. Parler made me do that, all in the warm-up. Okay? So all this stuff is talking about culture. What's next for you? Y'all hear me in this discussion. Most of everything that I say on the board, you've heard before. So what are you charged to do? What should you do? You have to make sure you execute it, folks. It's so hard to get discouraged. I know. You got all this good information at your fingertips, but you're discouraged. You're not using it. Or you think you are incapable. Everybody in here is special. I believe in you. Every single band I rep in here, I believe in you. Especially the high school band I rep especially in the undergrad, you're going to go and do some amazing things one, one day. But you have to believe that for yourself. And what you have to do is you have to start using all this great information. Don't go to these clinics and pick up all these pamphlets and you don't use it. Oh man, it's looking nice on paper. <coughs> this may not work for me, but you have to figure out how to make it work for you. Mr. Roussel, I'm very impressed with Mr. Roussel because he kind of reminded me of myself. You can tell that this man is well versed in the study of music. The reason why he does that, he can't uh, uh, categorize himself as a music teacher if he, if, if he doesn't know the information himself. I can tell he goes, do you go to Midwest? I can tell off top. And when he goes to Midwest, he's probably like a kid in the can. So let me go to this one. Let me go to this one. Let me go. And he's learning. I can tell. And he, uh, he's applying that to his students. And when he does that, you want to see those results. Okay. So if you need more information from me, just make sure you look us up. Uh, I'm going to share the link of my presentation with you guys. Uh, there's a, a lot of other things that I wanted to go into detail on, but I, you know, I do know that time is not of the essence for us at this particular point. But please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email, again, <coughs> if you want to be left with, uh, with Mr. Pollard. And if you guys have any questions, I, I do have to, uh, to leave immediately after this thing is over. So just make sure you, you, you sort me up. And I'll be able to answer any questions that you guys may have. Again, remember that college band records are not on the hill. We're just like you guys. We're just like you guys. So make sure you ask questions. Okay? So thank you all for having me. Mr. Collins.